It'd be cool to understand your pet's language. Imagine you're walking your dog and suddenly, Hey, owner, look at that guy. I feel like he's a bad person. Let's go away. Woof. Or you leave the house and your cat lying on the couch says, Buddy, yo, take the umbrella. My tail says it'll be raining. And food, get me some more food. In general, our pets could tell us a lot. That's because they have a superpower. Their sense organs, eyes, ears, feet, or paws, and hair, whiskers, and fur are much more developed than those of people. Our pets get a bunch of information from the outside world. Pets can see and hear what you can't. Animals also have a super intuition. They can anticipate dangerous situations and, moreover, help their beloved person. But here's the problem. They can't speak the human language. So behavior's their primary way to communicate. There's a whole science that studies animal behavior. Zoo psychology. Of course, it's different from human psychology. After all, such specialists can only observe behavior and draw conclusions. What if a zoo psychologist could talk to your pet? Just imagine, a gray cat comes into a zoo psychologist's office for a consultation. Hi Simba, how are you? Take a seat on the sofa. The cat jumps onto the table. No, Doc, I'm more comfortable here. Anyway, I decide where to sit. Okay, tell me what problems you have. None. I eat, sleep, play, and run around the yard. Sometimes I flip something over, but it doesn't bother me. I don't like the weather, autumn rain. I have to sleep a lot. Uh, by the way, Simba, do you really feel weather changes? People don't. Well, sometimes when the atmospheric pressure goes down or up, we have a headache. But without a window or a weather forecast, we don't know what the weather's like. Well, Doc, it's as easy as always landing on your feet. Just look to us. If we sleep with our backs to the fireplace or radiator, it'll be severe frost or snow. If a thunderstorm's approaching, I usually rush around the house. But sometimes I do that just for fun. (laughs) If I look out the window for a long time, it'll rain. Although I might just be watching the neighbor's dog. I really don't like him. Interesting. Could you feel something more serious? An earthquake or other natural disaster? Sure. We live in a calm seismic zone, but I've heard stories. My great-great-great-grandparents were from Italy, and they told me one. In 1944, in a small town near Naples, an elderly couple was going to bed. Their cat, Toto, started acting strangely. Toto nervously ran around, searching for a place to hide. He even refused dinner. Whoa! In bed, Toto woke the man up by pawing at his cheeks. His wife told the man that Toto was trying to warn them. I beg you, let's go to my sister's place. They quickly packed up and left. Mount Vesuvius erupted that night. Lava completely covered their town. Meanwhile, the couple and their cat were in a safe place. That's a fantastic story, Simba. But I really don't understand how Toto felt the danger. Well, I'll explain it. Before a natural disaster, many changes happen in the environment. Before an earthquake, various chemicals are released from the layers of the Earth. They come into contact with air and form positively charged ions. They, in turn, change the composition of air, water, and soil. And cats, with our senses, catch these changes. So, animals can detect even minor changes in the Earth's magnetic and electric fields? And people can't determine such cataclysms, Doc? A person, at a subconscious level, may feel danger approaching, our pulse may become more frequent, and our nervous system may become excited. But people switch on their logic and typically ignore their feelings. We have many devices that detect fluctuations in the Earth's crust, but they don't determine the exact time. Animals begin to behave unusually long before the start of an earthquake. Over 40 years ago in China, seismologists suggested a strong earthquake would occur in about a year, but no one knew the exact date. So they decided to keep their eyes on animals. In a few months, people started reporting strange animal behavior. Dogs howled, cats hid and left the house, chickens and ducks flew to the rooftops, even snakes woke up and crawled out into the snow. Scientists raised the alarm and took the locals to a safe place. A 7.3 earthquake occurred eight hours later. Since then, Asian scientists have been closely studying animal behavior. They discovered that when danger approaches, cats meow loudly, their fur stands on end, their ears flatten. Often, they try to leave home with their kittens. Dogs whine, bark, and may even bite. Eh, that's why I always keep away from dogs, Doc. What about fish and birds? Residents of dangerous zones often keep canaries at home. When they feel an earthquake is close, the birds start to chirp fearfully and flap their wings. In Japan, where earthquakes are frequent, many people keep goldfish. When danger is coming, their fish start to behave restlessly. Ah, humans are often inattentive. You know, sometimes I admire beautiful things for a long time, and my owners think there's a ghost. (laughs) Uh, They just don't know the structure of a cat's eye can catch the tiniest things, like a ray of light on a speck of dust. To us, it seems like you're looking at empty space. Cats can also see ultraviolet light, and your field of vision is 295 degrees. With this vision, cats have helped people more than once. Hey, have you heard this story? In Malaysia, an elderly woman was at home with her cat. The cat was acting strangely. It stubbornly looked first at its owner and then at the ceiling. The woman followed the cat's gaze and saw a man on the roof. It was probably a burglar who made his way to the attic to get into the house. The man realized he was discovered and fled. Oh, and here's another one. A girl returned from school and went to the garden with her cat. They settled comfortably at a table. The cat was on her knees. Suddenly, it jumped on the table, its fur stood on end, and it began to hiss loudly. The girl looked up and saw a dangling snake. The cat pulled the snake from the tree in one leap and grabbed it with its teeth. The cat defeated the viper. Wow, how could a person not notice a snake? Well, it's because, in the modern world, people have lost their self-preservation instinct. We don't need to get food or hide from dangerous animals. We're too busy with routine mental activity and logic. Yeah, sometimes it seems to me I might feel something is amiss. I hear vibrations, even in people. I often wonder if it's an illness. And by the way, I can smell many things. 
Of course, because a cat's sense of smell is many times stronger than a person's. In fact, you're not sniffing with your nose, but with Jacobson's organ. This is located behind the front teeth on your palate. But a cat's sense of smell has also saved people more than once. In New Zealand, your namesake saved a teenager. He was in his garage in the evening. He lit a candle and fell asleep. The candle started a fire. The boy's parents were sleeping in the house and didn't notice any smoke. Their cat, Simba, reacted instantly. It meowed and ran around, banging against the garage door. The adults rushed to the garage and called the firefighters. Yeah, we cats are truly amazing. You know, I can sense bad people. If I hiss at someone, I don't like them. It might be my intuition. Scientists also don't fully understand it, because we're one of the most mysterious creatures in the world. Ah, but very cute. <laughs> when you first see this creature, it may seem to you that this is a flying sapphire. The blue banded bee is as beautiful as this gem. These flying beetles have turquoise stripes instead of yellow. Their huge green eyes resemble emeralds. And their thin brown wings look like layers of cellophane with engraved patterns. Appearance is not the only thing that distinguishes them from ordinary bees. The blue banded ones are singles. They don't move in swarms and don't live in large nests. These beetles like settling in small burrows in the soil or crevices in rocks. Another cool difference between our blue guys and ordinary bees is their unique way of pollination. Scientists call it buzz pollination. The blue bee sits on the flower, holds it tightly, and begins to shake the whole body. It creates a series of small, fast vibrations. This way, the bee also shakes the flower, quickly and gently. These movements make the pollen move out of the anther. Then the bee stops and collects all this pollen. Some scientists think these bees prefer pollinating purple flowers. This helps the blue bees blend in with the plant and remain unnoticed by enemies. But this theory hasn't been proved yet. The blue banded bees mainly inhabit the territory of Australia. They are an important element in the agriculture of this country. These bees work with tomatoes, cranberries, eggplants, blueberries, kiwi, and chili peppers. Ordinary bees can't pollinate most of those plants, but their blue relatives can. On a global scale, more than 8% of plants in the world need to be pollinated through buzz pollination. That's why farmers love and protect blue banded bees so much. Wasps and bees are very similar in appearance. Sometimes they can be difficult to tell apart, but their lifestyle is totally different. Bees are quiet beetles that spend all their time pollinating plants, collecting nectar from flowers, and making honey. We can say that bees are small, powerful trucks, but wasps are racing supercars. They are more aggressive, much faster, and more maneuverable in the air. Their stings are more painful. Yes, they can also carry pollen from one plant to another and feed on nectar, but their main mission is to control the population of insect pests, such as aphids and some species of caterpillars. According to some estimates, wasps managed to get rid of more than 14,000 tons of insects in the UK alone during one summer. Imagine how much they do all over the world. Wasps are dangerous beetles, but among them, there is one kind that is distinguished by its peaceful nature and lifestyle. This is the mud dauber wasp. It also has a black and yellow coloring, but it looks more elegant. A swarm of regular wasps is controlled by the queen, but mud daubers are solitary creatures. They build a small nest of mud in which they live with their children. A mud dauber will bite only if it's in danger. Unlike other wasps, these insects only use their venom to paralyze spiders, flies, and caterpillars. Then they bring them to their nest to feed their children. So don't be surprised if you see a large horde of paralyzed spiders inside the nest. There can be more than 500 bugs in one nest. When little wasps hatch from eggs, they immediately begin their feast. The most unfriendly wasp species is the hornet. They are also wasps, but bigger, angrier, and with an even more painful bite. Its bite is one of the most dangerous among all insects. This critter can grow to be the size of a thumb. That's three times as large as a regular bee. Hornets attack in a huge swarm and pose a great danger to any animal. To fight them, people wear thick protective suits that resemble spacesuits. But the worst thing is that hornets invade hives and reduce the bee population. This can lead to a catastrophe on a planetary scale, since bees pollinate more than half of all fruits, vegetables, grains, and nuts in the world. Look at this big buzzing bumblebee. There's something wrong with it. It lands on a flower. And wait a minute, this is not a bumblebee at all. It's some kind of green, orange, beautiful beetle. Oh, now it takes off and looks like a bumblebee again. Meet the pellucid hawk moth. Thanks to its color and transparent wings, it creates the illusion of a bumblebee. The wings of most insects serve for thermoregulation. They warm their body. Other insects have wings that help them fight enemies. A butterfly manages to look like a large creature, thanks to the pattern on its wings. Some insects communicate using vibrations created by their wings. Colored wings have many different purposes, but the pellucid hawk moth has transparent wings, and their main function is to avoid reflecting sunlight. These fast-moving transparent wings practically don't shine in the light and tone down the color of the beetle. Thanks to this, when the moth is flying, other insects perceive it as a bumblebee and are afraid to attack it. These bumblebee copycats are found in Africa, India, Southeast Asia, and Australia. At the beginning of life, they are bright green caterpillars that feed on coffee and pomegranate leaves. From afar, it may seem that a hamster is sitting on the trunk of a tree, but this is actually the southern flannel moth. It's large and covered with thick fur. Don't try and pet it if you don't want to go to a hospital. There are many poisonous thorns hidden inside this fur coat. Even a light prick can make you experience lots of unpleasant sensations. Other insects that pretend to be bees and wasps are hoverflies. They look like wasps, fly like wasps, and imitate a wasp's sting. But their coolest ability is copying bee buzzing. In reality though, hoverflies are fragile, harmless creatures. Their ability to transform into bees is essential for their survival. And it works great. Many animals and insects are afraid to approach these skillful actors. But in the entire animal world, 
Lyrebirds get the title of the most talented imitators. These small birds, with large, beautiful tails resembling a lyre, live in Australia. Imagine getting lost in a forest far away from a big city. Suddenly, you hear the sound of a chainsaw. You don't see people, but the sound is getting closer. Then you hear the clicking of a camera shutter. But there are no people with cameras around. Lyrebirds create all these sounds. Thanks to all the complex muscles of their syrinx, they can mimic the sound of almost anything. Some people heard these birds imitating human speech. Also, they are good forest designers. Female lyrebirds build domed nests on the ground, in stumps and caves. They usually lay one egg there and take care of the baby for the first six to ten weeks. Let's go down from the sky to the ocean to see other tiny creatures. Meet Blue Ringed Octopus. This little guy looks so small and cute. Its bright neon color and blue rings are visible from afar. The octopus can easily fit in your palm, but it's better not to touch it. Meeting a great white shark may not be as dangerous as encountering this tiny creature. It's one of the most treacherous sea inhabitants in the world because of its venom. One bite can knock down a huge African elephant. The octopus is much more dangerous than a king cobra or a black widow spider because its bite often goes unnoticed. You may not feel or see when it stings you, and when you realize that something is wrong, it may be too late. Also, there's no antidote to the blue ringed octopus's venom. The creature's salivary glands are home to bacteria that produce this venom. The same substance is found in the venom of pufferfish. When it enters the human body, it paralyzes the entire nervous system. The lungs stop contracting to supply the body with oxygen. The only good news is that this octopus is unlikely to attack first. The last recorded case when this creature charged at people was in the 60s. The blue ringed octopus lives in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, from the coast of Japan to Australia. They spend most of their time in tide pools and coral reefs. Now we move to the hot sands of the southeastern U.S. states. You can find fire ants here. Outwardly, they don't differ much from regular bugs. But people call them fire ants because of their bite. Their poison resembles a flame. You're likely to feel the bite site burning. Therefore, it's better not to touch them and go away before any of these ants crawl into your pants. There are sharks that glow in the dark. For example, swell sharks. They live in the dark ocean depths, almost 1,700 feet under the surface. No one knows why exactly, but they emit a fluorescent glow only other swell sharks can see. Scientists detected the glow because they used filters that blocked out yellow light. They think that could be the way for these big fish to communicate with their buddies. This glow helps sharks fight infections on a microbial level. Cowbirds have secret passwords they use to recognize each other. They're a specific type of parasite bird since they lay their eggs in other bird species nests. The young cowbirds have an inner mechanism where they recognize their species singing, like some sort of secret password only they know. That's how they manage to find others of their kind. A grizzly bear has an incredibly strong bite. It may look cute, but if you're close to this big guy, you better stay out of reach of its sharp claws and especially its mouth. Its bite force is more than 8 million pascals, which means it can crush a bowling ball. Some animals have skin-deep stripes, and others have more superficial ones. Tigers are in the first group. Not only is their fur striped, but their skin is as well. It's the same with some other furry big cats, like snow leopards. Giraffes and zebras are in the second group, since they have patterns only on their coats. Speaking of zebras, do you think they're black with white stripes or white with black stripes? At first, it really looks like the second option is correct. Their black stripes mostly end towards the inside of their legs and on their bellies, and the rest of it is white. But that's not true. Surprisingly, they're black with white stripes. All of their fur, both white and black, grows from follicles that have something called melanocyte cells. All animals have these cells. They produce a pigment called melanin, and it gives color to their hair and skin. When it comes to zebras, chemical messengers tell which melanocytes send pigment to which area of fur. That's why zebras have a black and white pattern. But white is not actually its own pigment. It's an absence of melanin. So black is their default color. Koalas have fingerprints that are so close to ours that they could even taint crime scenes. It doesn't seem like they have a lot in common with humans, but take a closer look at their hands. They have distinctive loops and arches. So if any koalas want to do something illegal, it would be a good idea for them to wear gloves. Ghost crabs growl when they're around creatures they don't like or find threatening. They do it using teeth in their stomachs. First, they'll let you know they'll defend themselves if you try anything by showing you their claws. If that doesn't work, they'll go for fearsome growling noises like dogs. But the noise is coming from rubbing their three elongated hard teeth inside their stomach. Ghost crabs produce the same noise when they're grinding up food. Speaking of teeth, did you know narwhal tusks are actually some sort of an inside-out tooth? Unlike a majority of other whales, narwhals are the ones that come with a large tusk or tooth that grows from the inside of their jaw. It has up to 10 million nerve endings and they're unprotected, which means its tusk is very sensitive to any type of contact. It's almost like a piece of skin because tusks usually don't have many nerve endings. Up to 95% of humans are right-handed, and it's the same with bottlenose dolphins. There are even more right-handed ones among them than among humans. During one study, scientists found that bottlenose dolphins turn to their left side over 99% of the time, which means they're right-handed. They place their right side and right eye closer to the ocean floor as they go for prey, such as squids, shrimps, or smaller fish. More cool facts from the ocean. Did you know humpback whales use bubbles when they go after their prey? You might think they don't need any special method considering how large they are, but when they're lurking for prey in the open waters, these whales team up and use something called a bubble net technique. While swimming in an upward spiral, they blow bubbles underwater. These bubbles make it difficult for fish to escape. The oldest evidence we have of domesticated cats dates up to 12,000 years ago. Researchers discovered this almost 20 years ago when they were digging through an ancient village in Cyprus. 
They found cat bones right next to human ones, which suggested they were close even when their lives came to an end. Humans were hunters, so they domesticated dogs first, somewhere up to 29,000 years ago. Dogs helped them catch other animals, but they didn't think they needed cats until they started to settle down and store surplus crops. Mice became frequent guests in grain stores, so cats came in handy in those times. Puffins are quite innovative when they want to scratch their bodies. They can surely be proud of their stunning beaks, but they obviously think it's not enough for scratching. Researchers noticed they tend to spontaneously take a small wooden stick to scratch an itchy spot. There's a special type of ant that only lives in a small part of Manhattan. The Broadway medians at the 63rd and 76th Street is the area these crawling critters decided was the best spot for them. The Manhattan ant looks like it's from Europe, but no European species can actually match it. Hey Potterheads, can you believe there's a thing like chocolate frog? Well, not quite, but it looks like it. New Guinea and Australia weren't always separated. They spent millions of years together until about 12,000 years ago, rising sea levels divided them. Since they were together for so long, some animals and plants still inhabit both areas, including green tree frogs. These frogs have spread really far and wide, and some of them, who live in hot, swampy regions surrounded by plenty of crocodiles, actually look like they're made of chocolate. We all know flamingos for their specific color, but they're not actually pink. They're born gray, and that's how they would stay if it weren't for their diet of blue-green algae and shrimp. These foods have a specific natural dye, which is why flamingo feathers turn pink over time. These little Tasmanian devils grow up and leave their moms. They socialize together, forming bonds that last for the rest of their lives. Not only them, cows also have stronger social ties than we think. They like to socialize, and they make long-lasting friendships. One research even discovered their heart rates significantly increase as a sign of stress when they're separated from their BFFs. Imagine you could simply freeze yourself solid during the cold winter days instead of listening to your teeth chatter and trying to tighten your jacket. That's what frogs can do. Aquatic frogs mostly hibernate underwater and spend most of the winter at the bottom of a pond, lake, or some other body of water. Toads and frogs are generally cold-blooded, which means the temperature of their body takes on the temperature of their surroundings. So, frogs can freeze during the winter because of a high concentration of sugar or glucose in their vital organs. Once they unfreeze, they continue as if nothing happened. Octopuses have three hearts and blue blood. They can move at speeds of 25 miles per hour, and they spray ink that not only blurs the predator's visual field, but actually harms them. Also, they have nine brains, the central one and eight smaller brains located in their arms. That's why their arms can open a shellfish while the central brain is busy doing something else. An octopus even tastes with its arms. They have cells in their suckers that enable the arms to touch and taste in a way that they detect chemicals marine creatures produce. That way, an octopus can distinguish prey from rocks.